Hi, I am on Facebook Live, apparently. Yeah, uh, I guess. This, uh, I'm Josh Levine from Slate. This is Ellie Krieger from the U.S. Women's National Team, and she's the captain of your Washington spirit, yes. the undefeated yes. Washington Yes, top spirit. of the league. <laughs> are we allowed to like, be that excited about top of the league after Oh, we two are. Games? We are. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, I'm not sure how many times before, but I think this is probably the second time. Last year we were top of the league as well at one point. Well, I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm very happy for you because you scored a goal yes. yesterday. Um, how many goals would you say you've scored, club and country, like all combined, Let's as see. a senior level player? Okay, if you count PKs, um, that's one, two at the national team level, and three at the club level with this team. So, yeah. <laughs> We've got enough for I mean, for it's a hand. handful of goals. All right. we got to we got to start working on the right hand. Yeah, we do. So, um, the PK in 2011 against Brazil, yeah. that clinch, that was one of the greatest sporting events I've ever seen in my life. Oh, Any stop. sport. Stop. No, stop. seriously, stop. I wrote a story about it. You can <laughs> check the archives. It was Thank incredible. You so much. Um, you kind of like with the win in the 2015 World Cup. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't end up winning in 2011. Does that game still like have that kind of importance to you, the Brazil game from 2011? Absolutely. I mean, we were motivated right after that game to get back to work immediately to then, you know, want to win the next World Cup. And um, you know, we we thrive under pressure. And at that moment, we were so devastated because we had gotten that that tournament was such a roller coaster ride for us. And in that Brazil game, it felt like the final. You know, yeah. after scoring the PK and Abby's header in that game and playing 54 minutes a man down. I mean, that was just like an incredible win. And then the whole country hearing that everybody was behind us and it just felt like that was, that should have been like the final. But then we knew we had two more games and it was just, uh, it was really devastating to lose to, to Japan after kind of being up two to one in that game. And um, yeah, I mean, that, that just motivated us 10 times more to want to get back to, to where we were and, yeah. and, and, and win it actually this time. Well, as, as fans and as writers, we like to think that things happen in like a kind of progression and yeah. that game against Brazil in the quarterfinals, we're like, wow, they've got to win the whole thing. Yeah. And then in 2015, in the early rounds, the defense, led by Alan Krieger, was <laughs> unbelievable. But the team was kind of, Four others. you know, finding its form. And then the yeah. kind of the last game with, you know, the 5-2 win over Japan, mm -hmm. to, to me and to other people, it felt a little bit like it kind of came out of nowhere. Did, did it feel that way to you, or did you kind of feel like that actually was a natural progression and this was what's going to happen based on the form of the tournament? Yeah, I think you, you never want to start a tournament, you know, right off the bat with the best plays that, that you can make and the best team performance because, you know, you can only really go up from there. And that's, you know, we were playing seven games. So, right. I mean, we did have a tough group, but I think that was, that played to our advantage because we, you know, we, we had a tough group, but that prepared us for the, the, you know, knockout rounds against China and Germany and then obviously Japan. So I think that, you know, if we did progress through the tournament, obviously we ironed out some details that we needed to fix. Um, but it was great to, you know, play against those tough teams at the very beginning in order to notice, okay, look, we need to make this better. And, you know, communication, just skill, technical stuff that we needed to figure out and also personnel. And so I think that gave us time to then perform right from the China game on. It was just, we felt so confident and um, I don't think anything could, could have stopped us. Yeah. So are you somebody who feels like everything happens for a reason? Because for example, 2012, you have a really bad knee injury mm -hmm. and you missed the Olympics. Mm -hmm. My view is that didn't happen for a reason. Like yeah. Allie Krieger should have been on the 2012 <laughs> Olympic team. Like you worked really hard for it yeah. and I don't, and I've read actually interviews where you said it made you stronger, made you a better player. Does that mean that it happened for a reason? Or like, how do you look at that injury kind of now four years later? Um, you know, it was a tough moment in my life. It was probably the toughest injury in my career. And I, I really struggled because I was on cloud nine. I was playing the best football I had thought at that time. And, you know, coming off of a really good World Cup and, and going into another tournament back to back. And I was so excited to just feel comfortable being on that team. and. Um, you know, I, my play was, I just felt really good at where I was as a player. But then when the knee happened, you know, I had to kind of take a new perspective. And, and I think, I do believe that everything does happen for a reason because 
Now, I feel like I'm 10 times better of a player than I was then, and that was only four years ago, and so I'm um, going on five. And so now I think that I focus more on my footwork, I focus on my stability exercise, agility, like plyos training, and I really paid attention to that um, detail in, in my rehab um, or knee-hab um, you know, work and recovery process that I think I came out of that so much more technical and um, I guess stronger, you know, just, just in general, just a better mindset and my, my, men, my mentality was obviously changed and adjusted but for the better in, in a yeah. positive way. I think it's so hard for most of us to relate to a profession where so much of how you are kind of evaluated and based mm -hmm. on these just discrete events that happen once every four years. Um, and so um, I don't know if you view it that way um, or if you think that um, if you don't do well in the World Cup or the Olympics, then that's just okay. I mean, it just doesn't seem fair. I mean, it's, sports just really aren't fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's the risk to, you take. You have to embrace you know? it. Exactly. You do have to embrace it. And, you know, we, we take on challenges every day and you, you overcome adversity and, and obstacles. And, and I think that's what makes us stronger. And, and we all have. It's not just me. Uh, you know, a lot of the girls on the team, obviously, we have a few injuries now. And it's, you know, they're, they're you know, everyone's kind of overcoming adversity. And, Staying positive and really fighting because we are so competitive, we're driven and we're ambitious at this level, and you can tell. And that's why I think we are so successful because we help each other out, and um, you know we make each other better every single day, no matter if it's through injury or success. So we have a uh, ball that's off screen. Do we have uh, time for a demo? Let's do a little demo. So oh gosh. in my heels, uh, in your heels. I was thinking maybe you could show uh, the kids out there because we're always here on Facebook Live just trying to help out the kids. That's yeah. really what this is about. I love to help the kids. Kids don't really know how to head a soccer ball. Okay. They shouldn't head a soccer ball. Should I put on my okay. unequal headband? Um, I don't have it with me. Okay. Well, I don't want to like ruin any of what you've got going on here. Okay. But <laughs> if you could just describe to us what the, well, like, about my hair what the proper it. technique is. Um, well, the the. First and foremost, you always want to be the one to attack the ball. You don't want the ball to attack you. Um, so attack it, you don't let it attack you. And I think that's that. You gotta get your like head up and out. And and I don't know, you just have to attack the ball. You can't be afraid of it. If you're afraid of it, you're probably gonna yeah. hurt yourself. And so, um, yeah, not to duck out of the way, but just make sure you are attacking it. Do you feel like kids like under a certain age should not be heading the ball? There has been some discussion with that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's, you have to learn at some point. You know, when I was a kid, I was never, you know, told, don't, don't you dare head it. You know, it's going to happen in a game. You can't, it's, you know, it's unavoidable. And I think that, you know, at, at that age, I do, I do get nervous about young kids, um, you know, if they get kicked in the head or, you know, with the ball at such a hard pace, um, you know, because their brains are still, you know, forming and growing. And so that's, that's, you know, a tough issue, but there's also ways to help lower the risk of that by yeah. using, you know, an, an, an unequal halo that I also have just for my concussions and just, it doesn't, you know, prevent concussions, but it reduces the risk. So I think that's one of the ways that you can actually, you know, help out the young kids who do, you know, or the parents who fear that, you know, they're going to get concussed if, if they do head the ball. But uh, you can't be afraid of it. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to happen, so you have to be ready and just understand the correct way to head a ball. All right, we cannot let the captain of the Washington Spirit go without oh promoting. I'm messing up my makeup. No, no. Oh, well, no I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't know if I should throw this at you. Yeah, or... you can throw it at me. <laughs> right. How far, how far did I head? You want it, uh, you want Am like I going to head it to you? You want like an arc or do you want it like a nice direct shot? Maybe like a little in between here. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so people should go out to see you guys play. Oh, 100%. Now we're top of the league <laughs> in the NWSL, the Washington Spirit. And you guys play the in Women's there. Professional Soccer League here. We need your support. We need you to come. Um, it's an awesome time. And there's even a beer garden. <laughs> you guys can come, bring your families, your friends, and enjoy it. And yeah, watch some quality. Great soccer, beer. We have uh, two questions from the audience. If you have, okay. if yeah. you have a few minutes, are, yeah, we, right are we okay on time? We're 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 wrapping on time, so okay. rapid fire here. Really quick. Bailey C wants to know any tips on how to be a good defender. 
Maybe three tips. <laughs> three tips. Gosh. Um, Basically one. explain how you're good at soccer. <laughs> <laughs> three sentences. I spend, I think, a lot of work on my footwork. And still to this day, I need to improve every single day on that. So I think if you really understand footwork and you're, okay, footwork is one. Second is positioning on the field. Um, and your communication of staying like connected with the players who you play next to, which is your center back or wherever you are in the defensive line, and then your midfield player. And I think if you have that connection, you stay compact, and good positioning is also key. Um, and then the third is probably 1v1 defending um, and your technical ability to complete passes and your distribution. I think that's all in one. Um, and yeah, I just keep continuing to get better at that. Play against the best players you can play. Um, against and, and just work on defending and let them dribble at you all the time and yeah. Uh, we have multiple people weighing in from Europe, which is okay, pretty cool. awesome. And they all want to know, uh, Addy Peter asks, will you ever consider playing in Europe again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm really, really happy where I am right now. And um, I'm, I'm involved with, you know, Washington Spirit 100%. I'm here. Um, I'm involved with the community here. I love it, my hometown. Um, obviously, I, I, I played there and I had an amazing, amazing time. But even if I do have an itch to go back, it doesn't always have to be scratched. So, um, you know, it's it's up in the air. But I, I'm actually really, really happy where I am right now in this community. And um, you know, being I'm really, really loyal to the Washington Spirit. Very well said. All right, Allie, thank you so much for thank doing you. this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Facebook. Bye. Google.